And good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for coming to us in this workshop on exam management. It's going to be a two-pronged workshop. The first session, which is going to be 30 minutes, will be facilitated by Bruno Mpundo, and she's going to be uh, doing an exercise that we, I usually call, I wish I had known. And uh, the second session is going to be facilitated by Chantal and her mentors. Over to you, Bruno Mpundo. Yeah, thank you very much, Dr. Dan. The session time is a very important time also with the next And I think the instruction from the doctor, uh, program director, is actually ask the questions that are related to exam periods, things that you wish you could have known before you started your exam, and then ways you could cope better when you're writing your exams. So I think uh, it's going to be a healthy discussion. Anyone can start. Uh, for a few questions open from other students. Uh, I think we've got a few presenters before. Uh, so um, I'm just going to go straight to the point and some tests. Things I didn't know when I was a first year student. So firstly, I'm going to say um, campus services, study areas, which is the C block, where as a device, and they are of flexible skip study hours and you can join in the study group. You can even do your assignment day, you can do class night during the examination period, and meet new students in the same field that you are in. Let's go Peter Labs. You can even do your assignment in the computer lab, you can also study in the computer lab, even get assistance with my Lisa and Maya. They are digital learning advisors, and they are there to assist students in the entering their student court. Student counselors. They are there to assist students with career guidance, CV writing, examination preparation, especially now, anxiety, trauma, and difficult coping with the studies. Secondly, there are academic literacy classes. These classes are offered online for free by experienced facilitators, although not all models are covered, but these lessons can assist students who are struggling to understand their model content. Thirdly, um, campus activity. Student induction workshops and the field of students are registered to service and offerings. Exam workshops assist students with proctoring tools like invigilator and iris proctoring and navigating the exam. And then um, study methods that works for me. I have a study timetable. I always put on time management my time. Avoid information, join study groups, avoid misleading information, especially with um, Telegram. Read announcements and emails, keep your exam time time And then I want to put on my presentation for the board time out of it. Education, education is responsible to the city. But tomorrow belongs to those who pay for it. Thank you. Uh, my name is Ronaldo Ogodini, I'm an advisor uh, here in Harvard. Uh, we're going to talk about this uh, examination preparation. I'm with my colleague, I'll do my presentation and then we will do this slide when, when I'm done. Uh, the exam preparation, I'm just going to mention a few things uh, that students need to be prepared before they come to the exam. More especially, of students who coming from, let me say, from disadvantaged uh, uh, environments. So, as a student, you must make sure that you have always had the data and the connection of where you are writing your exams. You must make sure that you know, everything is fine. You won't struggle during the examination period. And to be prepared for exams, you must make sure that you, you comply which UNISA policies, which is the rules and, and, and the regulations of UNISA, but so that uh, you, won't be found, you won't be found guilty in terms of plagiarism and stuff like that. So, in terms of, 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 in the topic of today, which is the preparations of the examination, uh, make sure that you study on time, because this online exam is tricky, mm -hmm. more especially when you supposed to write the exams where you are writing exams not in a conducive place. 
uh, you will always panic and, 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 and have those anxiety. Some of you, it might be the first time, some of you, it might be the second time, we don't know which experience that you guys have. But what I would love to share with you it is doable. Uh, you, will, you will manage to, to, to write your price. Just comply, make sure that you don't do anything uh, which will uh, assume maybe, for example, the app that you'll be using that you have been plagiarizing and stuff like that. Um, over to you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Fabian. <coughs> Uh, my greetings, uh, colleagues in profession. My greeting to all the students online and also that are physically here. Uh, my name is Nsikelelo. I'm also in the student of I recently graduated with LNP as well. So um, I'm here to talk about the preparations in terms of uh, preparing for the exams. I know some of you might have already started you know, with the current year exams. Uh, hopefully this is going to be useful discussion and also please ask any questions that you might have that will help you and also your fellow students as well. Um, as my colleague also alluded here regarding about the preparations, uh, before you even commence the exam, make sure that you check in terms of how they're going to conduct your exam. Uh, for instance, we've got uh, some of the modules that are invigilated. So make sure that you have access to the invigilator app and also that it is working. Please do not come and inquire at the last day that you don't have access to the invigilator app. At the, the same day that you're supposed to be writing your exam, it's the same as those ones that you'll be using, for instance, the iris, you know, so it is your duty as a student. You make sure that you have access to that and everything is working and the number is also registered because there are some issues with sometimes in my life but being registered and all of that stuff so that we can make sure that we resolve those things in time. So I beg of you to please do that. Um, and also, do you communicate with your lecturers as well, with your tutorials online, regarding how the uh, assessment will be conducted? Because we had some few students that were very confused in terms of their exam. They're asking, when am I writing an exam? Only to find out it's a continuous assessment. There is no written exam. Probably you have to submit like six assignments, seven assessments, then that is how you'll be like your marks and it will be awarded the marks and also that will become the final exam. So but other students they are very confused in terms of that. So please do check your tutorial letters 101. How is your exam? But if you have any queries, we're here to guide you to make sure that um, you know and also ready to conduct your exam. Um, in terms of the preparation, obviously at this time now, you should have already done with your exam. Those ones that are writing exams, besides the continuous assessment, you already prepared, you know, because this semester it's also not, not very long. It's unlike the first, the first semester is quite long, but this one is very short, very short. So I hope you guys are well prepared already and ready for your exams. Um, so yeah, basically, I think mostly this is this should be an open discussion, right? More than anything, uh, besides the presentation, so that we can know exactly where are you stuck, you know, what kind of information would like us to assist you with in terms of the exams, and also what kind of challenges are you facing, you know? Because I know some of you probably might mention in terms of the data as well, um, so that we can help you. Yeah. Thank you. I think uh, what these three uh, students have indicated, you must be ready before you write the exam and understand what type of what, what type of exam you are going to write. Because of the continuous assessments that we have and the other ones we have exam examinations, we can do it online. Uh, by looking at the time, I think we can also involve the other students that are part of us in this setting and we'll take a few online and ask them what type of question or, or what type of uh, information they would love to have before they commence with the exams in the better way of actually coping with the exams. So uh, by the show of hands, can I have a show of hands? Okay, uh, we'll start with you, sir. Mr. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, my name is Neo Makuban. I'm an LLP student. So I just have a question. 
uh, in terms of uh, preparation, because I've also received this question a lot. Um, what type of uh, assistance, apart from the study guide, apart from the prescribed books we have and all that, is there some type of assistance coming from the university itself? in terms of preparing for the work, like the contact-based work, is there any other assistant assistance coming from the university, such as tutors or classes or study groups, stuff like that? Thank you. Thank you. There was one student that asked me also online, um, before she said, while she's writing an exam, is she able to use the toilet? Because she's using uh, an invigilator app. So it's those type of questions that we as students we encounter, especially when you're sitting in our corners at home. And you don't know who to call or you don't know who to communicate with, you know, to get that accurate information and what happens, what are the repercussions of using the bottom. Other one that I received was um, will my exam when I send it, uh, will I get the immediate response, you know, from the portal itself? So it's all of those anxiety questions when you're about to start with your exams, you don't really understand or you've never been um, the student at Tunisia who done online exams. So I think it takes you off, throws you off radar and takes a lot of time preparing, but then when you're there writing, you get confused. So I think uh, Dr. Kangeli will be able to answer those questions for us. <laughs> Unfortunately not. Maybe I'll ask the senior students to answer the questions and maybe Chantal can add. Um, so there's also a question online about it's about uh, what backwards so we'll do the online and we'll come to the, the floor. Um, the one student is asking when are we going back to venue-based exams? Um, as far as I know, only the CTAs and third-year accounting students that right, are on campus. Um, I've heard no news of bringing back venue-based exams. Um, so that answers that question. Then the other one. You said someone asked online. Uh, they're able to use the bathroom whilst they're writing. Online, yeah. Oh, the apps. Yes, whilst you're on the app. Yeah, yeah. Okay, if I can just quickly respond to that. Yes, okay, you may use the bathroom, right? You're allowed to do that. But what is important is to make sure that you don't log out of the invigilator app okay. while you're doing that. So once you log out, it, became, it becomes an issue then. And yeah. don't change your way. Okay. Yeah. There was another mm -hmm. one from Liam where he asked about the type of support besides the tutorial letters we mm -hmm. receive, the online classes and other stuff that the university does assist students whilst they are uh, busy preparing for the exams. Yeah. Um, in terms of the, uh, the, that support, yes, you know, so they do offer the support in terms of the classes, but I know that not all the modules they have their classes. That one I can assure you of that, right? Um, but I'm not sure what is the criteria they use in terms of uh, the, these modules, some of them, but they say that they check in terms of the, the status, the most ones that are mostly failed. Okay. Then some, high risk, high risk. yeah, the high risk module. So then they've got to have classes, you know. So I know that we may have a different opinion in terms of you may say that it's high risk, but it's not high risk, you know. So yeah, but that is what they check. But they do have some online tutorial classes and also some tutors that are available always to assist the student. And I know the student they always come back and say, I had emailed my tutor for the past three weeks. There's still no response. You know, so there are still those issues as well. Yeah. I am but aware the facilitation of learning, if there are students struggling with a module, or the students identify as, identified as at risk mm -hmm. or are taking too long to complete the qualification, if they're struggling with a certain module or two modules, they can contact the facilitation of learning and um, they have um, academic facilitators who will set up one of one consultations with those students. And then also uh, Jacques Tutoy, who does um, support with the academic okay. literacy. So um, if you need support with your academic writing skills, um, I think there's a big gap from high school to university and the expectations from you in terms of your academic writing abilities. So they do also offer support for that as well. Okay. Um, I think there's another question that's coming from the WhatsApp group. The student is asking, they want to handwrite, but they don't want to type. And then is it allowed? It is allowed. Yeah. No. It is allowed to do. 
do the handwriting, but you must just make sure that it's clear, yeah. so that when you scan it, it will, the, the marker won't struggle to. Okay. And also that is very time consuming as mm -hmm. well, so they make sure that they very fast when they are writing. Okay. Another one is a student, um, they want to understand when they have their phones on, because some of the modules require to have an invigilator app, and you need to understand how to use an invigilator app, and you must actually check the day before you write your exam. And then um, when they are online, it's fine, but then when they send their script, it says it's rejected by the system. So how does a student walk around their, their help line where one can contact and ask those issues whilst you're in session, and the time frame for the response from the university? How long does it take for that? Yeah, in terms of the invigilator app, because there's a team that is responsible for that to check any issues regarding about that. They have their WhatsApp line, all the students, they have the access to that because it's also written there as well. I think at the, not, not sure at the bottom of the exam script or something, but there's a number that is there that they can contact it directly with those issues. They can also take pictures and send it to that WhatsApp number. This is what they are experiencing. Um, but in terms of the script rejection, most of the time from what we had from the exams, because of the student is submitting the incorrect uh, um, file and not save as a PDF, you know, they're using the wrong format. So those are the issues that were, were found in terms of the rejection. Yeah. Yeah. I see we have a few questions online all relating to the use of the apps, how to use the apps, how to access the apps. And the uh, next two presenters, the uh, student mentors, are going to be taking students through how to access the app, how to use the Moodle apps, uh, the proctoring tools, um, the whole exam uh, experience online. So I'm also just, just wondering for time if the two students should uh, present, and then students can still see if there's questions that they haven't addressed. Because okay. when I look at the questions, all of these are addressed in the, the next two pre uh, speakers' presentation. Thank you. Um, I think we can wrap it up then, and then we can give it to the next two presenters, and then they can share, and maybe if you have more questions, then we can ask them afterwards. But Do from you? my side, I want to wish you all the best for your exams. I have a video stressful. of the invigilator app there. A video yeah. of the app. Yeah. So that we can show it there. We can see it. Right? I'll check with our next two speakers. They can come up with something. Uh, okay. But it should be available on my units as well. I know the portal it is late, it's available. Okay, when it's also available. Yeah, yeah no, it is so, available. But yes. also, it's, you know where to go to the portal mm. because it can be there, but then you might not be able to navigate through it. So I think maybe you can just a quick, you know, quick show how you can get there, mm. and then they can be able to mm. navigate through it further. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Hello. My name afternoon, is afternoon. Pamela Hursuk, and I am part of the Student Mentor Program. I'm currently completing my BA in uh, Psychology and Sociology, and I have the pleasure of co-presenting with Jordan on the exam preparation. So I will be um, covering step-by-step -step guide for successful exams as well as what to do before, during and after your exam. Right, so first we're going to go through a step-by-step -step guide to a successful examination. So it is important to check your exam timetable ahead of time to know when your module will be written, as well as where to access your exam question paper. It's also important for you to know which proctoring or invigilation tool would be used for your exam. And it is also important for you to test your device and you can do so by participating in a mock examination. This will also give you a feel of the online exam experience. And also by joining webinars and utilizing UNISA resources to help you prepare for your exams, such as this workshop. You should also familiarize yourself with the do's and don'ts of the online examination rules. So before your exams, you can go through the October, November 2024 online examination rules. If you are a student with special needs or differently abled, as well as unable to write an exam on a religious day, there are 
resources for those students. So for students who are unable to write the exam schedule on religious or holy days, they would need to get the religious organization to communicate directly with UNISA, informing them of your name, surname, student number, the module code affected by the exam scheduling, the nature of objection, as well as the dates of the religious days. This communication should be sent to the email listed below at least seven days prior to the examination. Right, for students with special needs, I've listed the contact details of the people that you can contact, the numbers as well as email addresses. Knowing when your mark will be withheld, so UNISA with, will withhold students' final marks in following instances, such as non-usage of prescribed proctoring tools, failing to upload invigilation or proctoring results in the prescribed period. If you are using the invigilator app, so exiting or minimizing it for a total of 10 minutes, providing proctoring or invigilation images that are unrecognizable, and if you are writing a written exam or assessment, failing to provide type responses for turn it in, and listening to audio or utilizing audio to text software unless it is declared for a student's assistive device. If you encounter an error during your exam, it is important that you contact either the, the number or the email address listed above as soon as you encounter the issue. The information that you need to include is your student number, the module call is code, the name of the college, and if you know the lecturer's name, a description of the problem, and if you know the internet browser you are using, information about the internet connection if you do know it, and if you have time to screenshot the issue, you can attach that as well, and the date and approximate time of your submission and occurrence of the issue. If you cannot contact the details above, the contact details above, there are alternative contact details to the right. This includes the specific college's contact details as well as the Department of Student Admin Assessment Administration. I'll give you a second to take a picture or a screenshot of this information for future reference. So as I mentioned, checking your exam timetable accessing your exam question paper ahead of time and knowing where to access it, preparing for which online invigilation or proctoring tool would be used for your exam, testing your device by participating in mock exams, which would also give you a exam online experience, and then joining training webinars and utilizing UNISA resources to help you prepare for the exams, such as, this research, such as this workshop, and then familiarizing yourself with the do's and don'ts of the online examination rules. You can do so by going over the October-November 2024 online examination rules. And then the, for students with special needs and who are differently abled, as well as those students who are unable to write exams on religious days, would need to get the religious organization to directly communicate with UNISA, informing them of your name, surname, and student number, as well as the module code affected by the exam scheduling, the nature of objection, dates of religious days. And that should be emailed to the email listed below at least seven days prior to the examination. And then there are contact details that I've listed, numbers as well as email address for students with special needs to contact. Knowing when your mark will be withheld, so UNISA will withhold students' final marks if there is non-usage of prescribed proctoring tools during the exam, failing to upload invigilation or proctoring results within the prescribed period, if you are using the invigilator app, so exiting or minimizing it for a total of 10 minutes during the exam, providing proctoring or invigilation images that are unrecognizable, 
And if you are writing a written exam or assignment, failing to provide typed responses for the Turnitin elected modules, and listening to audio or utilizing audio to text software unless it is declared to a student's assistive device. And then, as I mentioned, if you encounter an error during your exam or assessment, you should contact the number above or the email above as soon as you encounter the error. And what you'd need to include is your student number, your module code, the name of the college, the name of the lecturer if known, a description of the problem, and if you do know the internet browser you are using, as well as the information of the internet connection speed if known, and if you have time to take a screenshot of the problem, as well as the date and approximate time of your submission or occurrence of the issue. If you cannot get through to the number or email address above, there are alternative contact details, such as the contact details for the different colleges and the Department of Student Assessment Administration. I'll give a second again to just screenshot or take a picture of it for future reference. Right. And then you should troubleshoot any technical issues before you start the exam. So UNISA has provided resources to give you more information on dealing with technical challenges, how to scan, prepare handwritten examinations, whether it is for Android or for Apple, how to reduce the file size or compress a PDF, and how to reset your MyUNISA password. I'll provide a, a link for this resource in the chat function. And then resolving your login challenges beforehand. So setting up your MFA, which is your multi-factor authentication. If you've, been, if you've been prompted to set up your MFA, it would have been done by choosing either one of two methods, which is your either via SMS or phone call or via the Microsoft Authenticator app. I'll provide a link that would give you the technical support pocket guide to give you more information on how to set up your MFA. But if you, your contact details has been lost or changed and you need, you need to inform your NISA by downloading the DSAR03 form, completing it and emailing it to the email addresses listed below, along with a copy of your ID. And then last but not least, do not cheat. UNISA, UNISA has a zero tolerance for plagiarism and cheating during the online examinations. UNISA also offers counseling and support services, and these come in the forms of self-help resources, which are available 24 seven on the UNISA counseling website. I've also listed two email addresses on here, which is the Western Cape email address as well as national. Or you could book an online session with a counselor to speak to them one on one. And the link I will send in the chat function as well. Like getting to know what to do before, during and after your examinations. So before the exam, you need to plan your study schedule to avoid last minute cramming. So allocating your time wisely and incorporating past papers and mock exams to familiarize yourself with the exam format, as well as to also test your timing going through the exam. Remember to start early as soon as you get your study guides and resources. Reviewing exam regulations. So as I mentioned, familiarizing yourself with the exam rules to make sure you are compliant and prepared for the exam. And then understanding the exam structure. So you have to know the format of your exam, whether it is MCQ or an essay or like a continuous assessment as, uh, assignment, whether it is open book or closed book. And if you are struggling with exam anxiety, would like to know how to manage your time more effectively or different study techniques, it's important for you to seek support by contacting a student counselor. And then participating in workshops. So joining exam preparation workshops will enhance your skills and boost your confidence. 
and creating a positive mindset. So maintain a positive attitude, which will reinforce your motivation and resilience. What to do during the exam? So first, you're going to take a moment to breathe. You're going to start with a deep breath to calm any nerves and center your focus. You're going to acknowledge your efforts. So appreciate all of the hard work that you've put into your exam preparation, and this will boost your confidence. When you get your question paper, open it. Carefully review the exam instructions and assess the questions. So you're going to tackle the easier questions first before addressing the more challenging ones. And then a simple tip that helps a lot is staying hydrated. So you're going to stay hydrated and this will help you maintain focus. And staying positive. So if you encounter a tough question, move on and return to it later. If you're getting stuck on a question, this can increase in exam anxiety. You could also practice mindfulness techniques or grounding techniques to help refocus your mind when you're feeling a bit overwhelmed. Now you're done with your exams, what to do after? So you're going to review and reflect on your experience. You can consider what you might do differently next time you write your exam or what challenges you encountered, as well as reflections on specific questions. Maintaining a positive outlook, so you're going to keep a positive mindset as you move forward, focusing on your growth and learning from the exam experience. And celebrate your efforts, so treat yourself after completing the exam, regardless of the outcome, acknowledging the hard work that you have put in. But then you're also going to plan for next steps. So whether this is studying for your next exam or addressing any gaps in understanding, always create a plan to keep moving forward. Some mindfulness techniques that you can practice before or during the exams is deep breathing. So before you start, you're going to take a few deep breaths, inhaling slowly through your nose, holding it for a moment and then gently exhaling through your mouth. This will help calm your nerves. You could also practice grounding techniques such as focusing on your physical connection to the chair or the desk and noticing how your feet feels on the floor. This it can help bring your focus back to the present moment. Body scan, so you can briefly body scan, scan your body starting from your head moving all the way down to your toes, consciously relaxing any areas that you feel tightness and discomfort. And using positive affirmations is really important. So phrases such as I am prepared, I can do this, can help shift your mindset. And then mindful awareness. So if you feel anxiety rising, acknowledge it without judgment. Recognize that this is normal and then use the mindfulness techniques to gently guide your focus back at the task at hand. And just tackle one question at a time. Thank you so much for your time. I'll now hand over to Jordan. While we're just switching presenters, one of the students is asking a question about Moodle. Can the student move on to the next question while they're still struggling with the first question and then come back to the question later? Is that allowed? Yeah, it's yes. allowed. Yes, we all did that, eh? <laughs> um, my name is Jordan McLean, and I'm a third-year BA student. I'm studying psychology and sociology. Um, I will be covering individual prep, proctoring tools, where to access exams, and then exam focus and stress. Okay, I'll be now turning off my camera. Okay, so exam prep, I'll be covering four different types of topics. So the first topic is stay motivated. So how do you stay motivated? Well, first you set goals for yourself. So goals can be um, small daily goals or um, weekly goals, monthly goals. 
make progress. So every um, every day you s slowly make progress, small steps at a time, and then by the end of the month you would have made um, a lot of progress. <laughs> Set a time frame. So setting a time frame, um, daily, weekly, and monthly, this will allow you to reach your goals at the end of the week, at the end of the month. Don't make excuses. Don't procrastinate. And reward yourself. So rewarding yourself, um, small rewards um, at the end of the week or larger rewards at the end of the month after you complete your exam. What do you still need to do? So set up a timetable. So setting up a timetable, I like to use a um, desk calendar and I write everything and anything on this calendar. Um, and just setting up a timetable will help you reach your goals and make progress throughout the week. Exercise, eat enough and get su sufficient rest. Okay, so these are just basic um, things that you can do to keep energy, keep energized and do well in your exams. A positive attitude will help you to cope with exam anxiety. Camila did um, touch on a positive attitude and mindfulness during exams. Stick to your timetable and also have time for other commitments. So sticking to your timetable will ensure that you reach your goals. And lastly, if you um, do work, um, you would need to arrange for study leave so that you're able to write your exams. Revision. So revision, setting up a timetable, so a desk calendar, or you can even use a digital calendar such as um, Google Calendar. Mock exams. So mock exams are very good. Um, this is on the MyUNISA platform. Um, and it just gives you a feel and understanding of how the examination will work. Check TUT 101 for exam format. So um, if it's an MCQ, so multiple choice question or essay based questions. Revise assignments and your notes. So revising your past assignments will give you a feel for how they ask questions um, and what the lecturers are looking for. Look after yourself. So the basics, sleeping good, eating healthy and exercising. Avoid procrastination and distractions. Everyone procrastinates, but um, you just need to stay motivated and dedicated to your studies. Exam questions. So you can have essay type questions. Um, and normally for essay type questions, you have 48 hours to write. Um, but you just have to remember that this because you're under a time crunch, your assignments, um, your exam won't be as polished as your assignments. Um, so don't beat yourself up if it's not as academic as you would like it to be. Multiple choice exams. So read questions clearly. And if you don't understand any question, you can always red flag any questions you don't know. And then you can come back to it later on. Proctoring tools. So I did see in the chat that, that there were a lot of questions about pro proctoring tools. So UNISA has um, three proctoring tools. So we have Moodle proctoring, which is usually used for your multiple choice questions. Um, and this you would need to allow camera access on the My Exams portal. The Invigilator app is an app that you would need to download on your cell phone. Um, and the Invigilator app sends you notifications during your exam. So notifications such as um, take a picture of yourself, take a picture of your ID, and you would have to upload this onto the app. Lastly, IRIS. IRIS is used for the College of Science, Engineering and Technology. This is an extension that you would need to download before the exam. 
Um, Iris records your screen. It takes a video and audio of you and it will red flag any movement that it picks up. And then you would need to also um, submit the recording um, on Iris. So this is the link that you can use. I will also be posting the link on the chat function. Um, this would show you what proctoring tool you would use for your exam. So for example, if you click on the link, you will get um, this page over here and you will type in your module code. So for example, I'm doing PYC 3701. And as you can see over here, I'm doing, I, I would need Moodle proctoring tool. So Moodle proctoring, I would need to allow camera access on the My Exams portal. Environment and preparation. So environment. So because we're using proctoring tools, you need to be aware of the environment and location that you're writing at. So you would need a quiet space and no movement behind you um, because the proctoring tool will red flag your exam and maybe even take it further as to failing. So ideal would be at home, at a table, um, quiet space where nobody is walking behind you. Not ideal would be a coffee shop or a noisy space um, such as a coffee shop or a community area where other people are at. Device, so what you need to um, prepare for what device you will be writing with. So um, I would recommend using a laptop or a desktop just because it is more user friendly for um, exams. But if you don't have that option, you can always use your cell phone. But like I said, the laptop or desktop is just, it's more user friendly. Make sure, so what do you need to make sure to do before your exams? You need to make sure you clear your cache on Google Chrome. In the next um, slide, I will show you how you can do this. You need to make sure you have data or Wi-Fi um, before your exam, because if you, if you run into issues regarding data or Wi-Fi, UNISA won't be responsible for um, your data or Wi-Fi issues. Update your laptop if needed. So if your laptop needs any updates, this will ensure that it doesn't um, lag or, or update during your exam. Have no other windows or apps open when you're writing. Update your profile photo. I will show you also in the next slide, how you can update your profile photo. How to prepare. So log into my modules 30 minutes before the exam. This will just make sure that everything's working fine for your exam. So MCQ, which is multiple choice questions um, exam. This is time based. So you would have around two hours to complete your exam. So you would need to know your work well, well enough to finish within the two hours. Essay, for the essay exams, you should know your study guide well and potential topics they could ask. Okay, so how to delete cache on Google. So this just um, ensures that your uh, Google Chrome works perfectly for your exam. So you would click on the three dots in the corner over here, and then you can see delete browsing data over here. And then you would um, click, click delete data. So this will um, delete all the cache and cookies that are on your um, Google Chrome. When I do this, I, I do get logged out of my UNISA. So you will just need to log back in um, using your email and password. Okay, so how to update your profile photo on uh, my UNISA. So you, this is on my UNISA and you'll click on the profile and click profile. 
you will click edit profile over here. You will scroll down and you can see um, the file icon over here. You'll click on this and you can choose a file from your device. Um, so a clear photo of you and you would click upload this file. And then you just say update profile and your picture should show um, on your profile over here. Okay, next, where to access your MCQ and written exams. So UNISA does do um, written exams. This would be similar to um, like high school where you would have two to four hours to write on a piece of paper and you would need to scan in the exam. Um, but a way to access MCQ and written exam. So remember, this is a timetabled exam, so it is conducted on my exams platform. So my exams platform, this is um, the UNISA webpage, and you will click on my exams over here. And as you can see, uh, it will show exams for five days. And um, so here are the exams that happened on the 10th of October. And you can actually see the, the proctoring tool that they were using over here. So when it's time for your exam, you'll click on your exam and then follow the prompts afterwards. So where to access your essay exam. So essay exam happens over 48 hours. So remember, this is also, um, this is an off timetable exam. So it's conducted on my modules platform, not my exams platform. So you would go onto your um, uh, module, um, sorry, your um, study that you are doing. So I'm doing SOC 3703 and your assessment three is the exam. Click on assessment three and over here you can see um, it opens on the 6th of November 1 p.m. and ends 8th of November 1 p.m. I would need to upload it before 8th of November 1 p.m. and upload it as a PDF file. Okay, exam focus. So you need to look at what are the motivators for you. So for example, career goals, career planning, and you will need a support system as well. So career goals, um, the types of questions that you would be looking at are why, why are you studying? What um, do you want to achieve? And what does success mean to you? Career planning, you're looking at questions such as, how hard are you willing to work to achieve your goals? And how long are you planning to study for? Okay, don't cram your work. So um, using a planning um, a timetable, so um, a desk calendar or a digital calendar. Get exercise. Watch what you eat. Create an exam plan. So I'm um, using a calendar. Manage your time wisely, so don't don't procrastinate and have good time management. Stay confident. Use resources, so resources such as lecturers, um, your e-tutors if you have, um, also Telegram. Telegram's a good resource to use. And then revise your work, revise your notes. Exam stress. So everyone experiences stress during exams. Um, how can you avoid this? Uh, by not procrastinating. So don't procrastinate. Start immediately. Plan your studies using a calendar. Be dedicated and disciplined to study. What you put in is what you will get out. So if you put in a lot of effort, you will see the marks. Make time for your study. So good time management um, and using a timetable. So small steps every day. 
a quiet space to study and to write your exam because remember proctoring tool red flags any sound and movement have a healthy routine by um, looking after yourself by doing the basics such as sleeping good diet and exercise Good. Um, this is um, Chantal Adams' email address. Um, she's the lead counsellor for Western Cape Region. And then I will also be posting all of these links that you can use. Um, Camilla did mention these, but I will also be posting them in the chat function. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much to our presenters. Very clear, we understand. I think everyone in the room can understand. She was clear, right? Both of them were clear. And from now on, we're going to take this and then we're going to apply it whilst we are busy with our exams. Any questions? Uh, it's not a question. Yes. Just to let students know that if maybe you are struggling with uh, compiling an exam timetable, you don't know how to do it, or maybe managing your time, staying motivated, you can make an appointment to see one of the counselors. We will be happy to assist you. You must remember that these are skills and the skill is something that you acquire over time. So if you plan for the day and you don't achieve all your goals, you mustn't get discouraged, right? Mm -hmm. All you need to do at the end of the day is to sit down and ask yourself, why is it that I did not reach that goal and that goal and that goal okay and then once you have an answer then you think how can you do things better the following day and you plan again for the following day but if things don't go well don't just say oh okay i didn't reach this goal and that goal i'll never plan again don't do that okay you try and try until you are able to be disciplined and see it and be able to reach all your goals but you must also remember that life happens right mm -hmm. but you mustn't become your own enemy by planning and then you allow people to disturb you and you fit into other people's plans if your friends call you and say let's go to the mall or let's do this just say this okay let me check my diary or let me check my schedule and then you tell them no i'm only available after four because you do not want to fit into other people's plans it's important that you try and be disciplined and reach all your goals for that particular day but if things go wrong what do you do you reflect in the evening and then speak to yourself be positive and have that positive self-talk that tomorrow it's going to get better. Okay. Thank you very much, Doctor. I think, um, oh, okay, I think Jordan responded. There's a question around how to clear the cache if you have Microsoft Edge. And I think Jordan's just responded now. Okay. okay. Can we read the question out? Maybe some of the students here also have experienced it. So the, um, the student was asking, uh, I'm using Microsoft Edge, how do I clear my cache? And so Jordan responded to indicate you need to go to your settings, click on privacy, and then clear your browser data by selecting Control, Shift, and Delete. There's another question here online. They say they have a problem with whilst they're writing their exams. And there's a difference. Um, I think people get confused when we're doing this exam preparation. Every module has different requirements when it comes to exams. So mm -hmm. if I might be speaking about IRIS, it doesn't apply to your module. Do not panic. If someone is speaking about the invigilator app and it doesn't apply to your module, do not panic. Check always check your tutorial or check your 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 your, your letters that you receive prior to exams. Mm -hmm. What is required of you before you start your exam? Because if one will go into an exam room, knowing exactly what they're going to write, but they're doing the opposite of what the lecturer is instructed them to do. And I think that's where most of the failures come from. Mm. Uh, can we have another question? Student is asking how to do screen sharing and webcam. He's using a HP laptop. I don't think it's in relation to exams. 
Um, I'm not so sure about screen sharing. I've never heard of that. Maybe they're speaking about Iris, because I think Iris does watch your screen. Okay. Uh, thank you, Jordan. And the modifier tool. You see as now. As the webcam. Yeah. It's the it's the tools. It's mm. the tools. It's the yeah. individual effort. Proper tools. Mm. And also, uh, when 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 one is busy with exams, exit all those groups that you join during your studying period. Exit. What do you call it? Telegram. Telegram. Yes. There's other groups where they are sharing questions or they share script before they even upload it. And the university is able to pick it up. And if you are part of that group, it becomes a challenge for you to prove that you are not part of those students who pay or who copy during the exam. Mm -hmm. So my advice is, if you are part of any study group that you join during the semester, exit. Then write your exam, and then if you want to go back on that group, join it again. Because it is important. Academic integrity is very, very serious. You take it seriously in this university. So always ensure, when you are writing your exam, there's no interference with your WhatsApp. Whatever messages that you're receiving, just concentrate on your exam. Another question? The student is asking about the camera. So yeah. for the Moodle app, is there anything I need to do from on the camera settings or do I just take the option of leaving the camera on? For the Moodle app. For the Moodle app. Is it Moodle on your phone? Don't you download Moodle on your phone? Moodle app or Moodle app? She's asking about the Moodle app. Specifically in terms of the camera settings. <coughs> Jordan, do you know anything? When you put before, on your camera, you, before you start your exam, there's a, um, a pop up message where they say allow. Can you speak open. a little bit louder? <laughs> before you start with the exam, there's a pop up message, I think, on your left hand side where they say allow or block. And then you click on allow, okay. and that's when the time, that's the time so when you can see your face and then you start your exam. Okay. I don't yes. think that's in the app, the Moodle app is just on your phone. Yeah. To just, it's, that's where it shows all your modules, you can access all your modules there. For the camera, that is on the website <coughs> when you have to do an MCQ or something and then they will ask allow or decline and then you should press allow. Mm. So now, uh, just a quick question, what if I'm busy writing an exam and I accidentally decline? Is there an alternative? You, you, um, you, if they need your cameras to be on and you press the client, then you won't be able to access the, the MCQ. MCQ. You won't be able to do it. You need to press allow. Okay. The camera needs to be on. Mm. The camera needs to be on. Okay, thank you for the uh, response. Any other question that you have that are in relation to our exam? Yeah, but if you press the client, by mistake, mm -hmm. am I going to be able to go back to Pesalama again? Do I have that option? Yes. You just close the screen and open it again? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it doesn't interfere because never when you're busy uh, starting to write your exam, it goes into a session where it says recording. Time. Yes, and then there's time. So now that's a very good question. Now, if you accidentally click decline, mm -hmm. Now, will it allow it or will it give you like an option again to say, are you sure? You know, those type of I think it will allow you because remember you haven't attended the course yet. You're just allowing the camera to be switched mm -hmm. on. Okay. Another question. Uh, I'm busy writing my exam and things happen at home. We ran out of electricity and my battery dies. What happens? Mm -hmm. It's real life crisis. You know, it's, it's what we face in, 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 in our own. So, you're writing an exam, the electricity goes off, and your battery dies. So what other alternative, how do you communicate with the university? You're using this device, and the battery has died. How does the university assist with the number that you can call immediately? Inform them, how you can the device to call the from, you see? And then the time frame that you take,
So all of those things. So I think one should have their phones ready. You must mm -hmm. always be charged before you take your exam. And then if you do not have the facilities to charge, please come to campus. Campus is here. If you are having difficulties with your phone, it crashes a day before your exam, do not panic. Come to us, come to the SRC, come to counseling and explain this is your situation. This is the challenge, life happens and you need assistance. Let's talk passions, it happens. You know, there's so many things that hinder with us in, in finishing the in our exams. Especially, you're ready the whole time, then on the day, boom, and then your laptop crash. So, you can come to campus. That's what we can show you. Come to campus and ask for the SRC or ask for counseling, and they'll refer you to the right person who can assist. But do not come a few minutes before your exam starts. Mm. Now, you need to be considerate, also be responsible at the same time, where, okay, if I need assistance, I need to give the person who's going to assist me enough time to get whatever resources that I need. But now, if you're going to give them 30 minutes, it's going to be impossible. So come with plenty of time, where you're also prepared so you don't panic. Mm -hmm. Even the next person that is assisting you doesn't panic. I think that is fair enough, right? Yeah. Next one. Oh, any question? It's exam. We're preparing. Yes, my lady. Keep on. Hey, um, mine is about. I have a question about the invigilator app. Yes. And so, um, if you are doing a a take home exam or those those essay exams that are forty eight hours, do you need one of these apps like the invigilator app, Iron Soul? those proctoring apps if you're doing a for, uh, an exam that spans more than one day. Okay, I think that it also depends on what the module requires you to do. So one needs to read the requirements why you are taking the exam because some modules require a regulator app, some doesn't. Some continuous assessment where you need to do a two days or maybe seven days to, to upload to the exam. But you need to ensure that you read the instructions carefully and you understand what is required of you before you attend the exam. I think that answers the question. Because you, you cannot be speaking, you know, in, in, in an open bracket where anything happens. It's different module, different requirements. So just make sure you're in line with what your module requires you to do. Do not go to Telegram and ask people because they will mislead you or give you inaccurate information. Check what the requirement is always given to you prior to whatever examination that you're going to be writing. Read it. Read it carefully. Um, I have, and the, in the letter, they do talk about the invigilator, but I'm not sure if it's relevant to, to my exam. What I'm so I've been um, trying to get hold of the lecturers and trying to get as much information as I can, so I'm just asking anyone, it will, yeah. Okay, I think as is the SRC, we can take that responsibility and we'll also do a follow-up. So Jordan, Jordan wants here. to say Jordan? something. Yes, Jordan. Sorry, I just want to respond to the student. Um, I did post on the online um, chat function the proctoring tools link. So you can um, go and type in your module code there. And if there are no, if it comes up as there's no proctoring tool, like there's no result, then it's most likely that your um, module doesn't have a proctoring tool. So I have quite a few of um, essay-based um, exams, um, so a span of 48 hours, and those don't require proctoring tool because um, proctoring tool they watch you. So it's a bit weird if it's like 48 hours camera watching you. So um, I don't think the 48 hours, those don't have proctoring tools. Isn't it a continuous assessment? What is your model code? ENG um, 1503. 1503. Yeah. I am no looking. Yeah, yeah. There's nothing here. No and then you said you sent an email to lecturers. You know, we Oh, no, I only sent today. Uh, they have responded to other emails. Just I was concerned about the invigilator app. That's it. The ENG so, yeah. Okay. We'll do a follow up on that one. Any other question? Someone is asking now to get the to help you from the invigilator app. Jordan did cover that in your presentation earlier. Mm -hmm. So just make sure that you sign the register so you can go back and watch the recordings because it was there was a lot of information that the presenters presented. <coughs> so just check uh, what what pieces of information you need in order to get yourself sorted out. Uh, another question is, um, if you go into your exam, I don't know, the portal for exam, and then you find there is no exam script, who do you contact? 
whilst you're trying to write your exam, the script is not uploaded on your end. What happens to student? And also not the student, also they are allowed to email directly the lecturers or whoever that is responsible for that particular module so that it can have a proof that you made a follow up. This is what was happening at that time of the exam. But if it's a, a general challenge to all the students, they usually send an email or also an SMS immediately that there's a problem with that exam. So maybe they're going to reschedule or whatever the case may be, but there is a communication. Sense. Yeah. Okay. Because now that also interferes. Remember, they're using their phones as filtering tools. You disable any other notification that you might be getting from your phone. Now, boom, you're trying to access your exam, and there's no script. Now, mm -hmm. one does it. Do you take a picture? And you know, because of the university is very, very harsh when it comes to that. Yeah, those. usually that happens before you even log into the invigilator app, right? Because before you go to the invigilator app, you must make sure that you can access your exam script, right? Because once you log in there, it's going to start uh, the timing as well. So okay. you go to the invigilator, to the exam script, you check the script, you find the script, then after that, you go back to the invigilator app, you log in, then you can start with uh, your exam. Thank you. I think that answers the question. Yes. Okay, so I have another question, and it has to do with authentication. <laughs> yeah, um, so I don't know if anyone else has been having this problem, but I. I can't, so one of the lecturers send this uh, letter and they send a link and you're supposed to put your username, your password in and I've done that but it keeps saying my credentials are invalid uh -huh. even though my password works very well. So I went to a consultant and they use their password and their email and they've done the same thing and this is for um, course basic skills for online exams. I can't access that or the um, CAS, the in authentic Authentic yeah, authentic 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 yeah, 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 that. I can't access that also with my username and password, mm -hmm. even though it works everywhere else. So I don't know if anyone else has that issue. That's fine. When you're done, you can just go to the lab. They will help you. I went there. Yes, That's, yes. Yeah. The, the consultant there had the same issue when they tried on using their details. So. They should be able to help you because um, they're, they're able to everyone access when it comes to that. Yeah. Um, okay, I'll, I'll check with them when we. But can them. we have like an answer because I think there's someone online who also experienced the same thing. What can they do? You at home? That happens. It's been said. She's lucky. Mm -hmm. She's at campus now. So what do you do in such a situation? Well, as far as I know, regarding about that, we always send the student to the lab so that they can ask because this is um, some sort of an ICT issue as well. You know, so they're able to contact the other guys assist the student like they take down their student numbers you know because with the issue of the credential even last year there was an issue of that with my unisa sometimes on the invigilator invig app it will say it does not recognize your your details even though that you're yeah, reg registered student so but it does that um but i can quickly go and speak to them uh, i don't know if we can find an immediate answer can we actually have an email address where one can actually send in the query or mm. must it be directed to the region or is it directly to the lecturers because of it becomes confusing when you're writing your exam and this happens. Mm. Uh, there's another question from CIPOF. Do you want to take CIPOF now? Uh, Chantal? CIPOF, if you're online, you've got a question. And then for the answer to the Maori authenticator, because there's a guy on online um, and there's YouTube videos on what, what to, YouTube videos on how to get it to work, but I'm, I'm looking for a contact number. Okay. And there's a contact number, which is the number. Okay. And Simple, you can have in. Simple, can you hear us? Just unmute your mic. Good day. Here we go. Yeah. Good day, Good. can you hear me? Yes. yes. Hello. Hi. Um, I've got a little question. In fact, it's not a uh, little. Um, I've just changed phones last week. I'm not sure if you can hear me, but I've just changed phones. And now when trying to access my UNISA, in fact, my my the portal, it it requires me to authenticate on my app, the with the authenticator app. 
and it doesn't allow me and I've tried and installing and installing it back but still I cannot as a result right now I'm using my work laptop because I can access it from it but as for my personal devices I cannot at all is there any way that I can be assisted with regards to that okay thank you for your question is that captured uh, thank you can you go to the second question Camila you can unmute your mic I was just going to reply to the student. Um, in my presentation, I go through the MFA, the multi youth indicator app, and then there are contact details, two emails that I've listed below if you have lost or changed your contact details or device. And then um, you can go back to that, and then I've also shared the, the resource in the chat function for the app. Then, uh, Sipo, I hope you are covered. Any other questions related to exams? This session is about us. We are the ones who are writing the exams, so you must take advantage of it. Are you ready for the exams? If your laptop switch is off or there is electricity, classes, do you know what to do? Do you know what to do? And also, just keep this in mind, when you are writing your exam, always take picture screenshot, evidence. Because whenever you're sending emails, they'll ask you to send evidence of what really transpired. Because there's a lot of people that are writing. And if you're experiencing, the next person might not be able to, or might not experience it. But keep records of whatever it is, screenshot. Screenshot on your, on your laptop, screenshot on your phone, whatever glitch that you encounter, screenshot. And send an email, send it to the lecturer, direct lecturer that is, 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 is actually responsible for that module. Always send emails, do not call, do not say I call the center, I'm in contact with the call center. You will never be able to retrieve that communication. But if you've got it on email, you've got a screenshot, you are good to go, then you can be able to argue your case when it comes to those issues to the last few exams. Any other questions? I think that one is exhausted. So no. no more questions. Mm -hmm. Okay, there is another question. I think Roxanne has just posted something. Um, I keep on failing. Is it causa? AFL 1. What should I do? My letter never replies to my email. Okay, Roxanne, that is common. It happens to us also. Um, you can send an email. Um, you can CC the SRC. I don't know if you are aware of the SRC student representative within the region, and then we can also do a follow up on your behalf as to what is the issue. And we actually missed out the last week because this question we answered with DTSFL. That's correct. Can you just put our details there, please? Our details will be put on the chat. Thank you for attending this session. And what you need to know is that we are here for you. If you're experiencing any problems, please do not hesitate to contact us.